Hello, hello. How's everyone doing today? How's everyone doing today? It is Tuesday. It's V Tuesday. V Tuesday. We have got. Oop. I'm going to have to blur that. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. I forgot to hide my address. Hopefully, you guys didn't see that. Hopefully, the camera wasn't focused on that. Like, wait a minute. Did I cover up all my addresses? Hopefully, I did. Maybe get a P.O. box one of these days. How's everyone doing? So, yes, it's a little... I, I'm hoping in the future that Tuesday streams will be uh, earlier in the afternoon. Uh, it's a little. It's 4 p.m. here, uh, but just sort of still getting everything centered. So, how y'all doing today? How y'all doing today? Let's get the uh, music going. Jens, time flies by. 14 months. Jeez. V2 say that's right. So for those unawares, um, Saturday we started building the uh, V Minion, and that will be a Saturday stream thing. So going forward, uh, Tuesdays we'll be working on the V2, and then Saturdays uh, and Fridays if I feel like it, um, the V Minion, and then whenever, uh, most likely that one will be done first. Whenever that one gets done, then we'll do the Micron build. Tracking using the IP. <laughs> good luck. I'm behind seven proxies. Uh, it's four on time. It's always good. Yeah. Hello from Belarus. Hello. So today, uh, what are we doing? We're going to go through the unboxing of a Voron kit from LDO Motors. Um, now, this is a 2.4 R2 kit. Uh, LDO was in contact with the team to ensure what they ship with this kit will be compatible with the 2.4 R2 release. Uh, people are, I think you can buy these kits now. If you wish to purchase one of these kits, I don't have a link in the description because you have to go through your local uh, LDO reseller. LDO doesn't sell directly. So depending on where you live in the world, you have to go through like Printed Solid, uh, Sparta 3D, uh, uh, Fabrico, um, just wherever in the world. So if you're a vendor who's carrying this, and you want your link in the description for this kit, um, just DM me either on Twitter or Discord or whatever and just give me a link and then what uh, country you serve or continent. So, uh, is this the same kit? So, this is the production kit, okay? What Steve had was the pre-production kit. So, this is the actual production kit with all the bug fixes from Steve's kit. So, Steve uh, built his using in development parts. Now for us, um, oh, hey, look, it's a manual. We're building the release candidate. So this is pretty much, uh, yeah. Now, when will 2.4 R2 be released? So um, it's technically done, baby. There's still a few bug fixes, a few drawings that need to be updated. Soon, soon. Put it that. Uh, me X. Um, I don't know if I can turn on auto translate. Because I know. Uh, shoot. Let me see here. Oh, pay promotions. Yep. It should auto translate. I don't know how to set that up. Okay. Why R2 and not 2.5? Because it's still 2.4. Um, if you look at the designs, like the changes between V2, 2.1, 2.2, and 2.4, those were pretty big changes. Um, once this is built and these two are side by side, this is a 2.4, like three months before release revision. Um, side by side, most people won't be able to tell much of the difference. Really, the only big change is the gantry is now MGN uh, 12 instead of dual MGN 9. A few tweaks to some of the printed parts to make them go together better and, you know, if we saw any issues in the design, but like a lot of it is the same design. It's it's a revision, it's not a new model. So that's why it's 2.4 R2. So if you're building a, a Voron, if you built a 2.4 in the last year and a half, you built a 2.4 R1. R1 was mostly just STL bug fixes and tweaks. So um, 2.4 R2 is a revision update, but not a model update. And then also a whole brand new manual, which, um, here it is. Here's the whole manual. Whee. 
whole new manual. It's done. Hopefully. We're going to play Find Dunar's uh, Cursor while we go through it. So yeah, so we'll start off uh, facelift. Uh, I wouldn't say a full facelift, but it is an update. It is an update to the design. But I have so many printers because I like building printers. So. Turn the music down. Let's switch over to something a little. Uh, doo -doo. Let's go with some lo-fi. There we go. Okay. Uh, Nicholas, uh, 25 Swedish Kroner. Appreciate that. Uh, thanks for the great stream. Thank you for enjoying the streams. So, let's unbox this thing. Um, let's go to overhead. So, um, for those actually unawares, before we get started, I've already put the frame together. Um, I needed to do a video on how to square up a frame. Um, that's actually linked in the tutorial, or in the manual. And instead of using a built printer, I just built this frame. So, I've already got the frame together. So, I've already unboxed it, but I haven't actually gone through anything that's inside of this. So, and I'm still kind of playing around with camera angles and whatnot. So, there's still a few tweaks. I went through, um, cause people have been asking me to do it. I've started uh, doing chapters on new videos and then also the streams. Uh, going forward, I'm gonna try to remember to do it. When I finish a stream, I'm gonna go through and put chapters in it. So that way you don't have to like look for some random comment that says, oh, hey, the build actually starts like 20 minutes into the stream. Hey, Blade Scraper, does R2 use Clicky? Uh, not by default, but that is included with here. It's a mod, so if you want to use that, uh, you can. So, um, so this is cool. So this is just all the components, just a checklist in the kit and then uh this was cool they made me a anyone who got a review kit oh, that's right the camera moved got a uh, a cool little plaque so i think uh pretty much anyone who got a review kit so cnc kitchen got one and a, a few others i think so don't lose that okay so actually we'll do it overhead Now, if I'm not mistaken, um, I do have a Fetus here. I think it's a, the Voron edition. Now, the actual production kits, uh, when you buy them, um, I don't think they come with a hot end. So, I'm pretty sure this is the Voron edition Fetus. Because I know Jason included a few goodies in here for me. Um, yeah, it's the Voron edition. So, here's the thing. Um, I'm not going to be using this. Um, I'm not going to be using this hot end in this printer. Um, cause one, uh, the production kits, like when you buy this printer, it won't come with a hot end. You have to source your own hot end. There's too much going on with hot ends. I guess that it's just easier to source your own hot end. Um, and two, oh, where did I put it? Ah, there it is. Um, I'm going to put a, uh, a Voron Revo in it instead. So I'm going to put a Voron Revo in it instead of the Fetus Hot End. So. Lector, 25 euro. Appreciate it. Waiting 25 of such boxes soon. So yeah, so Fabrico will be one of the stores that will be carrying it. Uh... Carl, it doesn't come with a hot end because of sourcing issues and legalities with hot ends from different manufacturers around the world. Um, they just took the price of the hot end off. You can buy a hot end from anywhere. It's not that big of a deal. Plus it allows, cause so many, one of the other reasons too, they're trying to keep the kits size dependent and people want different hot ends. So why sell a hot end if you don't want the this hot end, you want this hot end. So why pay for a hot end you're not gonna use? It's just better to just source your own. So yeah, uh, we've got ourselves some cable management bundles and the, the whatever the heck that stuff's called, uh, some strips. Actually, I'm gonna put the frame on the ground here. 
it just has to do with, uh, you know, global supply chain being completely euchred right now. Uh, power cord, which I've got about 20 of these now, but this one looks pretty legit. Uh, electronics. Six millimeter. I've got the whole kit of nozzles. I, I got a, a combo pack, so I just have that one in there right now to keep it together. So 2.4 kit, tool head PCB. So this kit comes with a lot of PCBs. So it comes with the tool head. I think it's a revision of the Heart K one, if I'm not mistaken. Or it's, or no, it's, no, it's their own custom one. Yeah, it's their own custom one, I think. Design, but yeah, so LDO has their own tool head here. Okay, so yeah, so this is the part that mounts at the tool head. So yeah, original design by Hart K and then modified by LDO, which makes sense. So if you're curious what's in there, that's what's in that kit. Uh, we've got our drivers, which are probably 2209s, I'm betting. Yep. And I'm pretty sure this comes with an octopus. If I'm not mistaken, and then a bunch of other stuff, clicky probe stuff, uh, an input shaper tool. So they actually give you the ADXL uh, tool for input shaper as well as a clicky probe tool. So we'll dive more into that obviously when we get to that point in the construction. Uh, terminal block kit. So it comes with a bunch of goodies for the electronics. there. Uh, Jason's here. Everyone say hi, Jason. Here. So that's the electronics. Uh, electronics one of two. Okay, so that was two of two. So what do we got? We got, ooh, an actual Kingston SD card. Uh, heat sink for the Raspberry Pi. This one actually has a, uh, a sticker on it, unlike the uh, FISEC kit. No, clippy thingy. Wow, like an actual, like, proper plastic or metal, uh, was it Kingston lock or what, what are these called? Keystone, Keystone. Omron SSR. Got our inlet, pre-wired up. Raspberry Pi, 3B+. Plus. It's our screen. So it's uh, it's like the mini 12864 screen. Uh, Rick, two euro, thank you, appreciate it. Hi, is the fatest uh, Dragon discontinued? No, it just, there's, you know, legality issues with it, with some countries not being able, because uh, Slice has the patent in US for standoffs, essentially, but other countries rejected the patent or uh, didn't approve it or something like that. There, there's, just buy which one, whatever one you want to put in it. So they're not charging you for a hot end, so it's not like you're losing money. You just gotta buy your own. Uh, LRS 224. It's a mean well. Uh, I'm starting to get a bit worried. You're gonna make me spend a bunch of money again. You're a big boy. You're an adult. Or actually, I won't say big boy. I don't know who you are, but you're an adult. Maybe, potentially. I believe you are financially independent enough to make your own decisions. I'm not gonna force you to do anything. Uh, rail kit. Is it okay to use button head cap screws instead of socket head? It depends on the location. Some locations it's fine, some you may have fitment issues. So these are LDO rails. I've covered them before on the V0, but uh, all of these should be MGN9 except for one, which is an MGN12. So that's that. Boron Stealth Burner Upgrade Kit. Ooh la la. Wow, so it even comes with transparent PETG to print the uh, the diffuser. That's pretty cool. 
Uh, what do we got here? Uh, NeoPixel cable extensions. NeoPixels, and they even give you one extra in case you goof it up. Sort of connectors, or install printer fastener kit, the fan, the thumb screw. So I'm assuming, and sandpaper. Why do I have sandpaper? Why is sandpaper part of the kit? I'm not sure. Back up. That's cool. So, um, officially, 2.4 R2 does not include Stealth Burner. Stealth Burner is its own thing. However, um, it's a pretty easy swap out. So. What are your plans for this printer? Are you planning to print specific material? No, this will just be added to my regular materials list. I, I might move it up to being the new workhorse printer instead of V226, because this guy's got quite a lot of hours on it. And it's still fine, but it's uh, an old revision of the V2, so it's gonna need some updates. Uh, for the 5015 to clean the ears. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, Voron 2.4, belts, chains, and fans. So, nine mil, six mil, Fans, all the fans are GD Stein uh, dual ball bearing, which I've used uh, into the in the past without issue. Um, I've never really had a major issue with them. Uh, belt loops, rubber feet, uh, China chain, yeah, and the fans. Yeah, the GD Stein fans are fine. I've I've used them in most of my printers. They're not as quiet as like the Deltas. Uh, but they're also nowhere near as expensive, and they work good enough. You never get a box closed exactly as easily as you opened it. Alexander, yes. Yes, it is. He's also chilling on the, uh, the V0. Cable kit. Breakout cables. So, one of the big pluses and why, um... A lot of people want to buy LDO kits and why, you know, there there is a, I will say there, there is a cost premium to an LDO kit, um, is all your wiring's like pre-done. So you're saving hours of crimping. Like it, we got LEDs, so it's got LD, LED strips pre-wired, ready to go into your printer. Um, all your wiring's pre-done, pre-run to length, pre-crimped. Like for those that watched um, the build of the V2, V0s. Um, Pre-made wiring saves so much time. So if you could justify it like, hey, if, if I can go into work on a Saturday or get a couple hours of overtime here, work three hours of overtime, save you five hours of wiring, I think it's worth it. Honestly, um, if I have the option now with any build, if I, if I could pay more to get pre-made wiring done, I pay for the pre-made wiring. I've crimped enough in my time. Okay, motors. Uh, LDO motors. So we've got all the LDO motors. They're LDO motors, they're good motors. And then we got these little clippy things. Oh, cool, they're, oh, that's nice. They're uh, little wire clips that have labels on them. So you could stick them on your motors cable so you know which one is which when you, uh, actually put them into the machine. So they got like A, B, E, Z. Oh, that's cool. And they're LDO motors, so they're good. <laughs> uh, uh, spider, octopus. It's, a, it's an octopus. So uh, just for giggles, uh, because I have some, I'm not using that. I'm going to, uh, because I can, swap it out to a pro. Because I can. So. I might actually end up just using the, the default octopus because it comes with the kit. And 
I probably will because the config is probably all made for it, but it is what it is. Okay, so we got foam, gasket foam, and this is all, what is this? Motion, so it's all your your pins, your bearings, your gibs, your your gibs, uh, tooth idlers, big tooth idlers. Ooh, they got a nice finish to them. They're like heat blasted. So they're not like cast. Well, they are cast probably, but they got a nice bead blast finish. Cool. Bearings. All kinds of gubbins. All your gubbins. Does it include a ducky? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they all... Everything from Big Tree Tech has a ducky. Does the actual kit come with the ducky though? Let me check. No. Did the LDO kit... Did Jason steal the rubber ducky? <gasps> Jason! Did you steal the rubber ducky out of the kit? Oh, I'm gonna have to hold that against LDO. The octopus that shipped with the kit does not have a rubber ducky. That is that is unacceptable. I'm gonna have to send this back now. I don't know if I could build this. I I I, I don't know what to do now. Jason stole it. Jason stole it. <sighs> How could you, Jason? How could you? I thought I, I thought we had a deal. I thought we were friends. Okay, what next? <laughs> uh, Rick, two euro. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, we'll get hot end for the switch wire. Uh, anyone you want. I'm running a Revo in mine right now, which uh, with the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder actually works really good for multi-material. Although I need... I haven't used the Urk for a while. Um, if you watch my video on it, um, I ran into issues with uh, it feeding. I need to print a buffer system. I need a buffer system because the filament keeps falling out. My thought of just kind of using a friction style buffer uh, kind of works, but it doesn't really. So I need to figure out a compact wall mounted buffer um, that will fit there. Because that's all the room I got for it. Because I'm running out of desk room, as you can see. So uh, yeah. Oh, and then also, um, hey, look, I got a stream deck now. I've got enough buttons. So yeah, so tools, 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 uh, overhead. Is there anything you can say when the Revo Voron? Uh, it'll be out hopefully soon. Uh, normal Revos are shipping. I think they'll be available for sale tomorrow or they're starting to ship tomorrow. So they said a little, a couple weeks after. So it should be soon. Uh, Steven, I don't want one now. Oh. So uh, we got wrenches and tools and it comes with the heat set tool. It even comes with a little screwdriver. Heck yeah. So I'm gonna keep hanging out hold of these because I did end up finding my 2.5 mil, um, but I'll probably lose it again. VHB tape. I'm just gonna add it to my stack of VHB tape. Because every kit now comes with VHB tape, and they always send a full roll, and you don't need a full roll. So now I have like a half dozen rolls of VHB tape. Zip ties, always good. Got Bowden tube. Ooh. Oh, that is Gucci. So, um, in the old, uh, like the two, two point one, I think two point two had it too. Uh, there was handles on the top of the printer. And this was that you would take your door because the door was just one piece. You would take the door and you'd rest it on the handles that they were handles. We stopped doing handles, but uh, this kit comes with metal handles to put on top of your printer to pick your printer up. Oh, well, that's cool. I didn't even know that was in there. And these are metal. LDO Motors, Jason 100. Thank you, man. Uh, thanks for the love for LDO. Please find out details of the LDO kit resellers from docs.ldomotors.com about the duck in the LT box. China Customs don't let us ship out to prevent copyright issues. Sorry, you can't fix that. Wow. Okay. You know what? That makes sense. The duck is copyright. Like rubber duckies are a copyrighted thing. So, wow. Which is funny. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. I know, like, you guys, that's why you, the beds come, like, with the, 
Like you don't ship grease or anything because it's it's part of the package and you, it, you have to get a whole like um, like chemicals approved thing if you want to ship it. Of course, you know, when you buy stuff from Big Team Jack online, they just label it as, you know, printer parts and then just ship it so you don't really know what you get. So, um, whole big old bag of gubbins. And that's all your screws and whatnot. Okay. Um, do the frame kit. So, for the frame kit, um, there's like four pieces in there because, uh, I already put the frame together, but it's space gray. Um, everything was tapped um, deep enough. I didn't run into any issues and I've already squared the frame up. So that's going to save us some time. The last one that's it. Yeah. is I'm pretty sure this is our bed. I saw that on that camera. Four point five. Okay. Ooh, that is some thick star or thick cardboard. Uh, build rep court. So the problem with the uh, the rewinder tool for the rep box is um, you lose a spool. I have a six unit enraged rabbit carrot feeder. If I do the rewinders in the rep box, I can only use five spools. And then some of the spools I have are wide. So I, I don't want to lose um, availability of what I can build with or print with. I built the six unit. I paid for a six unit from Urkfa. I'm going to use all six units. You know, um, it was sent to me for free. But yeah. Um, bed is pre assembled. So we've got the Canovo. It's pre attached, pre applied um, gasket sealant. We've got our fuse pre-attached. Um, the ground is not attached, but we can easily attach that. There's a tapped hole, so we'll just screw it on when we get to it. Uh, is the magnet pre-attached? Yep, the magnet's pre-attached. And it's a double-sided uh, textured PEI flex plate, which um, if this LDO plate is like any other LDO plate I've used, is pretty good. So yeah, so that is the kit. And then uh, for printed parts, I printed most of them so far. I still have to print the electronics parts and the uh, actual like custom parts, uh, which if you're building an LDO kit, there's like separate parts you need to print for certain things. But I printed them all in uh, Sparta 3D. It, it says fluorescent red, but I could have sworn I ordered cherry red and the box said cherry red, but it's whatever the darker red from Sparta 3D is, uh, and it's sparkle ABS plus, and then cloud gray. So these are printed parts. So, put our printed parts over there. Put our bed, um, good thing I have room now. So, um, I guess we start building now. Any any questions about the kit before I start building? Does anyone have any questions? Uh, what side is the build plate? What side? Oh, it's a 300. So this is a 300 by 300 kit. I have it in the description of what I'm building. Uh, any recommendations regarding the X-Rail MGI if you want to switch to Stealth Burner after the initial build? Um, if you're building right now, you might as well. Um, 2.4 R2 is soon. So if you're, if you're planning on building now, get the single MGN 12. Go with the single MGN 12. Don't bother with the dual MGN 9 if you're building now. If you already have the dual MGN 9, you could still use Stealth Burner. Um... That's dual MGM9. I got Stealth Burner because Stealth Burner is literally the front face, so the uh, the duct portion with the fans, and then the uh, the two pieces for the tool holder. Those are compatible 
with the existing carriage, X carriage. So if you're, you can just print those, swap them in and use your existing extruder. If you want to go to clockwork two, then yes, you do need the, uh, the MGM 12. But if you're having no issues with your current extruder, so for example, that's uh, an LGX, it, it's fine. So me swapping to the MGM 12 just gives me the MGM 12, but I'm not having any issues with the dual MGM 9, so I'm not gonna bother switching. Are you sure? Measure it. I, I, I trust LDO a little bit better than Fizek, put it that way. Um, and yes, it, it is definitely a, uh, a 300 and not a 350. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Can I put it back in the box and send it to you? No. LDO Motors Jason 20. Thank you. Appreciate it. Kit not include the hot end since there are so many good choices for hot ends. Raspberry Pi is an option too. It's very expensive in China, double than overseas. So we recommend you get the Pi local. Okay. So that makes sense. And that's what I was saying. So if you buy the LDO kit, um, you have the option of buying a Raspberry Pi. They are hard to get and they're more expensive in China. So it's easy. It's cheaper if you self-source your own Raspberry Pi instead of ordering it with the kit. And then for the hot end, there's many good options out there. So just buy your own, pick which one you want, print the parts for the one you want, because the kit will work with any hot end that's supported by Boron. So, uh, surprises in 2.4. Well, we'll go through the manual, um, right now. So let me, no, no, don't put, don't move that one. That's nope. Dang it, OBS. I want to move me. I want to move me up over here. There we go. Put me there. And then shrink me. No. Not the Windows button. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. So let's go through the manual. So, table of contents, introduction, blah, blah, blah. So, Voron 2.4 R2 build guide. We build space shuttles with gardening tools. So anyone can have a space shuttle of their own. That is kind of the whole mantra with Voron. You don't need complicated tools or any custom components or machinery to build a Voron. You pretty much need some snips, some crimping tools, and Allen keys. Why do we go with MGN12 instead of MGN9? Uh, we went with MGN12 just because it's, after playing with it on the switch wire, a single MGN12 is good enough versus the dual MGN9. The reason we went with dual MGN9 is the original design with just single MGN9, but that was Bowden setup. When we went to direct feed setups and all the extra weight on the tool head, there was a lot of slop in China rails at the time. A lot of cheap China rails had really sloppy tolerances. And with the extra weight, it was kind of an issue. So we doubled up the rails to kind of cancel each other out because they're on different axes. Uh, one's vertical, one's uh, horizontal, and that works. But then you start running into issues of binding and twisting and whatnot if you have issues with your extrusion. So going to a single MGN12 just kind of gives us the robustness we want, but also it's less complicated because it's it's now one rail. So Thomas, 1999 euro, appreciate it, man. Yellow. No, I'm building a gray frame, not a yellow frame. MGW. I don't know what is MGW9. Oh, yeah, the pan oh yeah, the panels. Uh, the panels are in a separate box that I forgot in the other room because they came in two boxes. So. Okay, so table of contents, if you wanna know where to go. Um, for those wondering why the manuals, uh, why does it take so long? Uh, um, the manual is like 266 pages, or 291 pages, so. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's a long manual. Yeah, so you, you have 286 pages of actual content in the manual. Uh, LDO docs links, one second here. I think I have them saved somewhere. Don't switch. Okay, so for all the companies that are DME, they're uh, That's the old manual, apparently. Let me pull up the new manual. Um, I'll, I'll update the links after. Okay, fridge bar. Okay. Second here. 
Sorry, I'm just, I got stuff on my screen I can't show. Okay. There we go. So, uh, here we go. Oh, no, not view page source. So this is the doc site for LDO. I'll try and remember to put that in the description. And this is the new manual. Apparently the one I had up was slightly older. As I said, there's always stuff being tweaked. Yeah, see, even more pages, 289, next steps. So printing guides, okay. We're on printing guides, 3D printing process, FDM. Please don't use resin. A few people have tried to use resin over the years to print their boron parts. It sometimes works for some parts. I have the front shroud of uh, the self printer on there is printed with resin. It's holding up fine, but there's no load on it. Um, I've also seen carriages get ripped in two. Nobody has built a Voron using resin parts for the structural components and it has survived a decent amount of time. So please don't. It, it, you're gonna have a bad time. Camera wrong focus. I know it's because it's zoomed in. I gotta play around with where it focuses still. Um, I'm like just out of the range right here. I need to be like here for it to focus. But anyways, uh, material, please use ABS or better. Okay, ASA is fine. ABS is fine. If you have a good PC, you're okay. Just be careful. Just use a good plastic. P PLA and PETG, again, known to fail. And when they fail, they fail. Layer height, print everything with 0.2. Layer height with 0.4 nozzle. That's what everything's designed in. Some parts can get away with a larger nozzle. Uh, your money may vary. But these are how we've always recommend printing your parts. If you can't print the parts yourself, you can go through PIF, which is printed boron, printed Ford, Voron parts, printed on Vorons for Voron builders. Uh, the parts are very reasonably priced compared to sourcing them through like a, uh, like a print service. So there's that. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a... Uh, can I share the manual? Not yet. I'm not allowed to. Um, there's a bit of a backlog. File naming. So if you want to know how to print your parts, uh, if there's a number, that's how many you print. Uh, primary colors don't have anything in front of them. Accent colors have a little A in front of them uh, with the little brackets around it. And then if it says X4 at the end, you need to print four of them. If you need help, go to the Voron Discord. Reporting issues. Should you find issues with the documentation or have suggestions, please go to the GitHub and open something there. I don't know how GitHub works. I'm horrible at it. So just click that link and uh, open an issue there. Okay. DMing a random admin about it usually doesn't work out too well. And again, this is just a reference. Stuff changes. Join the community. Check the doc site, which nobody ever checks, but check the doc site. Okay. Hey, hardware references. I don't, I, what is a screw? I don't know what is a screw, um, but there's a lot of screws. So if you want to know what the different types of screws are, here's a, a little reference for the hardware. So what a heat set is, what the, the image will look like in the CAD. It's all there. B-roll, 199, appreciate it. Uh, need Voron, need Nero 3D. Uh, Fabrique already made me a bunch of Nero 3D flex plates. <laughs> so I've got a few of those. Uh, there we go. Hey, you need a ball end, Allen key, hex driver, yada, yada. Hey, how a blind joint works. If you don't know how blind joints work, click this link. It will bring you up a wonderful video that some guy made. Okay. So if you need uh, to know some stuff about blind joints, there's a video. Okay. We know how they work though. So, hey, the first four on printer was released to the public March 10th of 2016. There you go. There's your, your, your knowledge nugget of the day. So put together your frame. Um, if you want to know how to put together a frame, Hey, there's a video here. Some random guy made a video about how to put your frame together. Once YouTube decides to load. Um, Anyways, that's my video. So if you want to see how this frame goes together, um, there we go. Watch this video because that's this frame. So we're not going to put the frame together on the stream because I already did it in this video because Dunar wanted me to put a video together and how to put a frame together. So there we go. So we're skipping this part of the manual because that's covered in the uh, video. So let's get this up 
and continue where we left off. Damn that gigabit Ethernet. I know. Oh, uh, I think it's the uh, the uh, the the ad blocker. Live again. I'm always live. So we need some extrusions because we've already built the cube up, and now we need to put our bed together. So I think it's these extrusions. Nope. It's the same extrusions that are for. ones are all too short. Yep. Okay. And where is my fastener kit? Can I move that down? No, that is as down as it goes. Okay. So we'll go overhead, I guess. So I need M10, M510s. So Oh, this is gonna be fun. So, everything is all nice and labeled in baggies, so that is good. Um, 510, M510, M530, M530, M516, nope, I need M510. M510. Uh, the only downside is, is everything being in baggies is kind of a little annoying to dig through everything, but it is what it is. Thanks for your tip. Uh, thanks for your help. Please look into the rattle resonance problem sometimes. Uh, Tor Design in New Zealand, $5. So for resonance, okay, um, if you're getting resonance issues, that is actually, it, it, it has to do with the harmonics. It Depending on what size you built your printer, it, there's several things that can cause it. Make sure you have Stealth Chop disabled um and it could just be at certain speeds and, and frequencies your your printer vibrates um i had that issue for the longest time on uh v226 and it was related to running the tmc 228s that i had in stealth chop mode as soon as i turned off stealth chop mode um the harmonic issue went away um when i was running speeds over i think 200 meter millimeters a second so The R1 manual is so bad. Back in my day, we didn't even have a manual. But yes. Oh yeah, and uh, another Gucci thing. Um, these are also anodized to the color of the frame. So, more uh, LDO Gucci-ness. Is this an R2? Yes, this is R2. So, R2 manual, R2 printed parts. This is R2. It will be public soon. I've got a release candidate. Um, because apparently some people don't know this. Um, I'm, I'm on the Voron team, so I have access to this stuff. And don't worry, I got permission to use it. Can't remember who it was. Somebody met like some other YouTuber. Like made a comment about my streams on a video saying, "You just he's a he's a Voron fanboy." I'm like, I'm, I'm on the team. That's why I build all the Voron stuff. Like, did you know Joseph Prusa is a is a Prusa fanboy? <laughs> is the bed Blanche Crown? Um, I don't know how the bed is. I'm assuming it's good because it's LDO. But I will check. Um, it looks like it does have the Blanche grounding marks on the what little I could see of it. Uh, but it's already got the magnet and the sticker or in the heater pre-applied, so. It's an R2-D2? Yeah. You 
can always tweak these if you need to. Fortunately, this desk itself is not flat and I don't not using the granite for this. So put those on. M510s with some shim. Okay. Oh, wrong button. Overhead. And, and then I need some M5 shim. Spacers M5. So why not washers? Uh, people have asked why we call them shims, not washers. There's actually a difference. Uh, these are exactly one millimeter thick. Washers are just kind of yellowed. So you, there's no guarantee thickness with washer. So if you if you want to use washers in place of shims, um, you, you might not it might not work. Something like this where they're just used as a spacer, yeah, it probably work. But somewhere where like the actual size is critical, you might run into issues. And then we need some M5 T-nuts. What does R2? Uh, release 2 or revision 2. I think it's revision 2. So it's just basically like an update. It's a patch. But this one's a pretty big patch because we've updated quite a few things um, in terms of printed parts. A lot of, a lot of minor changes and tweaks. Um, the gantry has been updated to basically what the same gantry in a Trident is. And then also the manual is a full update. That's the big, uh, that's the big thing. So. Also, when you go to, uh, because unfortunately this has happened to somebody, when you go to put your bed rails on, okay, make sure it's on the bottom, okay? You should have the holes for uh, attaching your frame together on the verticals, and they should be vertical. So if you put some, your frame together like this, you're gonna run into issues later. Um, unfortunately, I seen on the Discord, somebody built their printer like this and didn't realize until they got pretty far in because these will fit this way. They won't fit this way, okay? Okay, they don't fit this way, but they built it like this and then they got to some point in the build where they realized, hey, something's not lining up and it's because they, they built it like this instead of like this, so. Yeah. If you do it that way, you're gonna have a bad time. Why is it not? Cause it's still a 2.4. It's not a full new machine. It, it's a release update to the 2.4. Nortech, 499, appreciate it. Love the streams. You know if there is any possible future for someone to join the Voron development team. So for those interested in joining the Voron team, because we get a lot of those questions now, um, there is no way to join the team, okay? It is, there is no process to join the team. Um, to join the team, you basically be a member of the Discord, post a lot in the community, share designs, make stuff, contribute, and if, we think you're cool, we'll invite you in. But there's no like process, there's no set process. So people have joined the team because they're like super helpful or we've invited people to join the team because they were super helpful for helping others with builds. Um, others created cool community mods like uh, Et and Hark K. They got in for the uh, Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder and um, Micron respectively. And they were, you know, they seemed cool people. But there is no set, hey, how do I apply to join the team? There, there is no process for that. Don't come to us, we'll come to you. So, but the first step is make sure you build a Voron. I, I, can't, I can't tell you how many times somebody has said, oh, hey, I wanna join the Voron team. It's like, like they'll, they'll DM me or somebody else who's a mod or an admin. Hey, I want to join the team. It's like, okay, cool. First step, build a Voron. It's like, cool, I'll get right on that. And then we, we you know, make a mental note of their name and then we, we check on them three months later and they left the Discord a month ago. So, yeah. When? Soon. Oh, there it is. So, 
So these are loosey goosey. These are these are nice and loosey goosey. So now we gotta actually put them in the right spot. So how you put your bed rails in is based on the center of your frame. It's not based on from the sides because the spacing will always be the same off the middle. Okay. So there's your position. So if you're curious, if it's a 300 spec, it's 230 millimeters from one side is the middle. So get your scale out, measure 230. And then I make a little ever so slight mark just so I make it easier for reference later. Which you're not gonna see because I got a top extrusion in the way. Dang it. So 230, and then it is 65 on each side. Now you can always tweak it a little bit later once you get your bed on and everything, but you don't want it to be too far out because you're going to be mounting uh, some stuff to these. So they kind of, you want them in as accurate as a position as possible, but you do have a little bit of wiggle room later to adjust stuff. So Get it as close as you can, but don't be afraid. Uh, don't like freak out if you can't get it perfect. Wait, what am I doing? Did I not measure this right? Wait a minute. Ugh. No, that's right. That ain't right. Those numbers ain't right. Hold on a second here. Desktop. Half the printer width for standard size. 300 spec is 230 millimeters. That can't be right. Because that is way... 230. That is way out. That is way out. Oh, you're measuring from the outside. I'm measuring from the inside. Yep, that'll do it. It's measured from the outside. That'll do it. Uh, the distance between the extrusion. Yeah. Any idea why the bed rails are not blind jointed? Ah, cosmetics. You, you could blind joint them if you want. But then you just got an ugly raw extrusion looking at you. So. Yeah, that, that looks a little bit more centered. I'm like, wait a minute. As soon as I spun it around, I'm like, that doesn't look right. There we go. That makes a bit more sense. See, this is why I build printers with chat. That way, if I screw something up, I can just yell at a bunch or ask yell. I can ask a bunch of random people. Because you know, random people on the internet are always the ones who know everything. Sometimes that's actually true. There we go. 
And then you get situations where I'm asking questions about coding or whatever in Linux, and they're like, oh, you have to undo the bash GNUI with a, a subprime command. And I'm like, what? Tell me what to type. <laughs> Okay, so we have that. Oh, by the way, everything is metric. If you don't know, everything is metric in this build. I need to mention, you see. Check for squareness. How do we do that? Oh, hey, it's my video. That's me. So, yeah. Uh, Z drives. Okay, so we're moving on to printed parts. So we got the Z idlers, and they are idlers. Remember that, idlers. Not idlers, idlers. Jester, thank you for becoming a member. Uh, our Z drives, deck panel, Z0, 1, 2, 3. Overview, the chapter starts with an overview of components. Handle with care. Linear rails, preparation and mounting. Hey, there's a video. See, it's trying to load an ad, but I have ad blocker, so it's like, no. There we go. Hey, there's your video from me again. I'm, I'm clicking all the video links because part of me going through this build is checking sure, make sure the manual is actually good before we release it. So that's why I'm checking all the links. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so linear rail prep. All linear rails arrive with shipping oil to ensure smooth gliding motion and long service life. The oil needs to be removed and the carriage grease. See the Voron sourcing guide for a recommended list of lubricants. We attached the link video to get you started. We opt to skip every other hole in the linear rail when designing the mounting pattern for this printer. This cuts down on the hardware and still meets the requirement for our use case. When tightening the bolts, tighten them from the center outward to ensure that the rails sit flush with the extrusion. So yes, when you're putting your rails on, every other screw hole, okay? Um, it's designed with that in mind. So if you try to put them in every screw hole, uh, you'll probably run out of... Uh, You'll run out of hardware. YouTube Premium is friend. I got an ad blocker. It normally works good. It's it's for some reason ad blocker on this computer doesn't work too good. Like it, it just is funky. Don't watch my own videos with ads. No. Why would I? Um let's need some gloves. So, rail time. So what I'll do is I'll just get these ones good to go on stream and then uh, the Y rails and the X rail I'll uh, do off stream. Ad blockers, piracy. I technically agree with him. The problem is there's uh, it's such a gray middle ground. It's like well, technically it is, but nobody's going to do anything about it. That's why, if you notice, YouTube ad revenue is nowhere near what it used to be. That's why you see so many YouTubers now, they have, they have ads in their videos, because those pay so much better. Let's go overhead. So LDO rails, they're, I'm not concerned with the quality of these rails, put it that way. So if you can, depending on your rails, don't take the carriages off and reball them and whatnot. Um, it's not like the old days, most rails come pretty good. So I'm just gonna give them a quick flush with ISO and then re-grease them and call it a day. Some ads are just annoying. That's why we have ad block. Pretty much. Honestly, I don't watch TV. I don't have satellite. I don't have um, cable. I, I have internet. And what I do is most content creators um, have Patreon or YouTube membership or whatever. And the thing I like about YouTube is you could set values. Same with Patreon. So. Personally, I, I have, oh God, I don't even know. 
in my personal Patreon and then the Nero 3D one and then also YouTube memberships. I probably 50, 60 bucks a month. But what I do is if I like a creator, I'll I'll just I'd rather give like two or three dollars, like the, whatever their basic tier is, to a lot of people than like give twenty dollars a month to one person. So I, instead of paying for cable or satellite, I have like a content creators I like fund, and I usually keep around fifty or sixty dollars a month, and then just a bunch of creators one or two dollars a month versus you know one or two creators a lot a month. So, but. That's just me. I'm looking for my grease. When am I building the rat rig? Uh, the rat rig is a Saturday night thing. This is Tuesdays because it's V Tuesday. And, uh, because I still haven't gone to Princess Auto to go buy a proper dropper. I'm still using the baby medicine dropper. Uh, overhead. So to grease these up, easy peasy, uh, line it up so that the carriage is over a hole and go splooge. And that fills it up. Weekend Warrior, good evening. Half Fox, member for eight months. Fear count going up over the months. Well done. Thank you. Appreciate it. What am I even at right now? Uh, 533. Cool. I I make it a point not to watch my stats. Like, even when I put a video out, I won't check the stats on them. Usually for like a couple hours after release. I just don't like doing that. Because then you get all anxiety. Like, oh my god, the video's not doing that good. It's like when if you if you put out YouTube videos, YouTube will tell you it's like, oh, this video is doing compared to your last, you know, ten videos, it's doing nine. Like it's it's not doing good, and you're like crud. So that's why I don't pay attention to that. Okay, so as you can see, um, it fills them up, and then it, it kind of comes in the rails, and then just move them around a bunch, and you're good to go. Wipe away the excess. I know Princess Auto has them. I just. They moved their Princess Auto. They built a new Princess Auto on the other side of town for me, and then they closed the one that was close to me. So, uh, yeah. What stepper motors do I recommend for a kit? Uh, with LDO motors. Uh, the LDO motors makes a 2.4 kit of motors. So just buy their motor kit and just roll with that and you'll be good. So these are stainless rails, so you shouldn't have to worry about rust. So I'm just wiping off the extra grease, but I'm still not going to wipe them down with ISO because I just don't do that. I like, I like out of habit, I like leaving the rails a little bit greasy. Um, just because I am paranoid about rust. And having one of these cheap slap mats is great for this kind of thing. LDO Motors, Jason, 20. Thank you, appreciate it. For those pre-order the LDO kit from our resellers, we shipped out the first batch last week. Expect to reach resellers in six to eight weeks. Shipping time can still can't be controlled though, but we expect around when you can get it. Okay, yeah, it, global shipping's just screwed right now. You gotta remember that, guys. Anything coming from another country to another country is just a mess right now, so. 
Okay, so we are putting on our... Uh-oh, where did I put them? I printed out all my guides and I don't know where I put them. Oh, here we go. Rail guides, there we go. So I need these guys because uh, we we're putting those. So why is that there? As you likely skipped over the advice to flip through the entire manual, we added graphics like this to assist you. So if you know how, there's a reference point right there. So M3 T-nuts, so we need M3 eights, which I got a whole whack load of them. And mind the carriage. Carriages are designed to slide easily along the rail. This unfortunately also includes sliding off the rails. Dropping the carriage is likely irreparable damage. Oop. Dunar! Oh wait, that no, that's gra grammatically correct. Dropping the carriage likely irreparably damages it. And then dropping the carriage will likely irreparably or dropping the carriage likely irreparably damages it. I guess that's grammatically correct. Okay, center rail guide. Use the MGN9 rails to position the rails center of the extrusion. Uh, leave a three millimeter gap at the bottom. Okie dokie. Even US sh Canada shipping is screwed. I know. My wife, my wife's shop had to, uh, or her plant where she works had to shut down um, for a couple days because of... Uh, the border being closed. Couldn't get supplies in and couldn't ship stuff out. And I knew I know a few people that got screwed over like that. Grammar police. Okay, so tip. Um, this is what I do. When you're lining up. Uh, okay, let's move this over so you can see. Yeah, there we go. Uh, when you're lining it up. And you got all these T nuts. Put the T, put the rail next to it, and then just line your T nuts up, or T nuts up, T nuts up, T nuts up, um, so that they're kind of in the right position before you go too far. So that way, when you go to actually screw the rails on, you have a little bit easier time because they're all mostly lined up. And then you can slide it into position after. Remember, it's every other. So depending on how long your rails are, you might have an extra one on the end. Uh, probably better to say likely will damage it irreparably. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, you, you really don't want to drop these rails. Um, I've done it, it sucks. It really sucks, trust me. line it all up actually rotate this way so I can see which means you guys aren't but I'm the one building it consult the manual 
So right now I'm just getting them started. I'm not actually screwing them down. And then when you screw them down, uh, start from the middle and work your way out. This way you uh, ensure that if your uh, carriage is bowed, it should sit flat. And also make sure you're putting your rails on the right side. Take the time, make sure your rails are lined up properly. The last thing you want to do is put all your rails on, flip your printer up, and realize you put the rails on the wrong side. So when you're looking at the design, you see right here, the rails go on the inward side. So they're facing each other in the same direction as your bed extrusions. You don't want them facing across your bed extrusions. They face each other in the same direction as the bed extrusions. Okay, and about three millimeters from the bottom, I believe, is what it said. So just use like a little flathead screwdriver to kind of pry it. Millimeters. Okay. Put our little guides on. Screw them all down. And then also leave the plastic thingies in until you no longer need them. You do not want one of these flying off while you uh, flip your printer around. Go through, snug everything up. So people ask why I don't use like Wera or like screwdriver hexes. I use like actual Allen keys. Um, it has to do when you go to torque your screws down. Like you get a really good feel of how much torque you're putting on your screws with one of these. Yes, it's easier to over tighten them, but you also get more of a feel, I, I feel, when you actually tighten them down. And I, I think it's easier to get a more consistent tightness using something like this versus turning a screwdriver. Okay, make sure everything moves. Hey, we got one done. Now we just do it again four more times. What time is it right now? 5.15. I'm hoping the goal today is at least get the, uh, I don't know, see how long these rails take. We did unbox it and uh, talk for a bit. So we'll, we'll see how far we get on the build. But basically we get however far we get. I have no actual goal for how much we're gonna do each stream. Um, gets done when it gets done or when I get hungry
whatever happens first. But I would like, since we started at four, I would like to get the Z assembled. At least get the Z on. That is kind of the uh, the overall goal for what I want to get done today is get the Z assembly done. It's just unfortunately this part is just tedious. Idea why the Voron Design website might be down? I have no idea. Um, uh, let me. Is the site down, guys? Oh wow, you guys are quick. Okay, I don't know. I'll let you know when it's back up. Okay. So three millimeters. Spacers. Make sure it's still three and did it move and then tighten it up. Back end changes. Okay, there you guys go. You're playing around in the back end. Apparently you guys caught it within like a minute of it going down. Spacers, it's spacers. Hamster shift change. Yep, the uh, the hamsters are getting their union mandated uh, break once a day. So, it's how you run a, a website eco friendly? Yeah, that's why you use hamsters. If you were to use children, there's there's child labor laws. With hamsters, it's, they, they do have a really good union, yo. They do get really good benefits out of it, so there, there is that. So it, it's hit and miss. Either, you either have the child labor or you have the, uh, the better union. One or the other. Pick your poison.
viewing at 1440p. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you're wondering about my setup, go watch... Uh, well, don't do it right now. But uh, go watch last week's stream. Or uh, was it Saturday stream? Um, I went over the equipment upgrades. Which I'm still tweaking everything right now. So, like, right now... Um, I went and got a Casa smart plug. So, I have, like five Google Home Minis because a while ago you could pick them up for like 10 bucks each off um, I think it was Spotify it was doing a thing if you created a Spotify account you could uh, get a Google Home Mini for like 10 bucks so I got one my wife got one my brother got one my mom got one and none of them ended up using it so I ended up with like all of them because my mom like switched over to Alexa too so she gave me some when she swapped over so uh, now I can like turn the cameras on and off just from voice. So. And I, I think there's a plugin that I could download where I can even use the stream deck to uh, control them. And then also the reason I really wanted the smart plug was uh, I didn't want what happened with my previous overhead cam to happen again where it died because I left it on for like a year because it's the overhead camera. I, I, I don't look up. So I, I kept forgetting about it. So it would just stay on all the time. So now they're set so that um, the plug has a timer so that every day at I think uh, 1.30 in the morning, it turns off. So even if I forget them on after a stream, at most, they'll, they'll still turn off automatically at the end of the day. Uh, the Casa is sick. I use it. Yeah, I bought four of them. I was at Best Buy and they're like 10 bucks each, I think. Canadian. So. Say, hey, Google. No. Actually, oh, hi Google, how you doing? I'm doing all right, thanks. The winter games are here and I'm ready to keep you updated about your favorite sports. Try saying, who's leading the medal count at the winter games? Hey Google, how is Canada doing in the Olympics? Here's the latest update on Canada from the 2022 Winter Olympics. Max Moffitt will participate in the men's slope style final run one in freestyle skiing today at 8.30 p.m. Also, Max Moffitt will participate in the men's slope style final run 2 in freestyle skiing today at 8.58 p.m. And finally, medals. Canada has won 17 medals, Ooh. 2 gold, 4 silver, and 11 bronze. 17 Find medals. Info on Olympics .com. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I don't know if like my noise canceling that I'm running will cancel that out. But it's a lav mic, so it's like mounted on me, so I don't know if it'll pick that up. Everyone's Googles are going off. <laughs> yeah, I gotta stop doing that. Somebody messaged me after the last stream. It's like, you're not supposed to do that. It's it, it's like considered bad manners to do. I'm like, yeah, but it's funny. Plus, I don't know about you guys. I, I wear headphones on my computer. I, I don't I haven't used speakers on my any of my computers in like a decade. But that's just me. That's the other thing. I don't think I can like, I'd be cool if I could put, make Google have its own like command prompts so that it would be different, but there's only like so many command prompts you can use. Like, I've, I've had people like, oh, you, you should get your, like, the in-house, like, don't use, like, the cloud service home automations. You should be using 
some custom one-off like independent one open source one i'm like i've got like a dozen or half dozen google home minis they're cheap they're easy and it, i just plug them in and they work like honestly 90 percent of what i use it for is just music when i'm cooking in the kitchen <laughs> Or my wife broadcasting a message to me when I'm downstairs. Uh, can I change it to computer? Can I say okay computer? That'd be cool. Computer? I, I do have a home server now, so technically I think I could do it. It just... I don't have any of the compatible devices, and honestly, I don't need it for much. Like, literally just temp, like I have a Nest. That's about it. And the only reason I have a Nest is because when I bought the house, the uh, thermostat that came with the house was like, the technological equivalent of like some wires taped together. It was, uh, it was a pretty basic thermostat. And it was like dying, so we, uh, I just bought a Nest because it was on sale. Oop, did I forget it? The screw. Oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I missed the screw. There we go. Rails upside down. Oh yeah, upside down. This one's upside down. I gotta go the other way. I'm like, why is that spacing off? Ah, there we go, that way. I would have flipped it over and been like, wait a minute, that ain't right. Good eye, good eye. One, a two. See, I did that on purpose because I wanted to make sure you guys were paying attention. That was the, uh, that was part of the test during the lecture, right? Mid lecture or uh, mid lecture test. You got to make sure you're always awake. Can't just sleep during these streams. You got to pay attention. Viewer engagement. Exactly. Viewer engagement. Like, I, 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 the, uh, accidentally muting the mic midstream, that, that, that's gotten old. Everyone knows that trick for engagement. So I've got, I've got to come up with new stuff every now and then. And, uh, now on streams, um, instead of muting the mic, we're going to, uh, we're just make sure you're uh, paying attention. Engagement. Okay. Where are we at now? Centered rail installation guide. Three millimeter gap. Rail safety. As we turn the printer upside down further during further assembly, make sure each carriage in position with a piece of sticky tape. The rails were delivered with plastic stoppers. You can also temporarily re-add them to prevent mishaps. Yes, because at some point we're gonna flip this. And it's gonna go like this. And the last thing you want is your rails or your carriages to all go whoosh because then you're gonna have a bad day. So it's not really concerned um, as long as you keep the stoppers in. It's all about zooming. Yeah. 
for illustrations <laughs> for illustration purposes only do not attempt to replicate and by the way keep an eye out for dunar's cursor okay install remaining z rails okay we've already done that okay now we got to flip over and attach our deck so at this point you got to figure out which part of the printer is the front um so what you would do is um, if any of the sides or any of the extrusions have a nick on them or a scuff or you don't want to see them, that's your front. This is our front. I don't know. It looks fine to me. This is the front. So we are going to flip it. I'm going to put some M5T nuts and I need to go get my uh, panels. Dogs being a mopey mutt, just chilling upstairs. I can see him on the stairs. It's like, Mama's not home. I'm just going to be mopey and hang out by the door. Uh, Jason's out. Have to run to pick up the kids. Watch the phone. Don't watch me and drive, Jason. Unless you're on the bus. Then you can watch. Or the subway. I don't know where you live. So, fun fact, this is not something you would think about until it happens to you. Um, but a 3D printer content creator, I get so much garbage and just packing material and styrofoam and cardboard boxes. It's it's absolutely ridiculous how much, how quickly this builds up. Like, you don't think about it until you're like, I've got a pile of cardboard boxes I got to get rid of now. not to scratch finish on any of these what's the panel thickness I think they're three millimeter I haven't printed any of the panel stuff yet either that's the door so I need the bottom panel which is I believe this one down here for now. Stay. Imagine if it's LTT. Oh, LTT has like, LTT isn't just a YouTuber anymore. They're an operation at this point. Like they have, what, like 30 plus employees now? Like you can't really compare a YouTuber to LTT anymore. They they've they've gone beyond just being a simple content creator. Ask uh, Stefan about garbage. Oh god, he probably goes through so much. Uh, Stefan does like the craziest amount of piff. Like he's running a whole print farm for piff. Can never peel these off in one piece. Thanks. Ah. Never peel off in one piece. Come on. Dang it. Plus now, geez. You know, they did a, a thing about hiring a while ago, and somebody's like, "You should apply." I'm like, "They are one. I'm a. I can't write. I. I don't think I've ever scripted any of my videos ever. Like, I, in case you don't notice, I, I prefer live content. <laughs> I don't have to script this." And I don't have to edit this. I push a button and I build printer. But uh, they're on the opposite side of the country. I'm I'm South Central Canada, and they are uh, West Coast. So 
a little bit of a ways away, unfortunately. If anyone can ever peel off this packing and it come off in one continuous sheet without ripping, you are a god. And don't cheat and use like the sheets that are perfectly square. It's gotta be one of these sheets with all the cutouts. Well, central. Well, Ontario is the center part of Canada, let's be honest. Where pretty much everyone is, except for the Frenchies. Taking longer than I wanted to. Then again, this side's textured, so. Damn it, damn it, damn it. There we go. Okay, note to self take the other stuff off before the next stream. Shots fired. <laughs> The stream is unscripted, just like our segue to our next sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, no. Unless they cut a big fat paycheck. Part of me, honestly, if they ever contact me, if they want to pay enough, I part of me just wants to do it for the meme. Because every YouTuber has to do a Rage Shadow Legends spot at some point. That's just part of being a YouTuber, I think. I go to Papa Two, five dollars. Late to the stream. Would the rails be okay with fewer screws? Um, I'd recommend every other. Um, if you skip more than that, if your rails have a bow to them, they might not flatten out on the extrusion. Don't peel it back over itself, that's how it tears easily. So what, just peel like up and away? And then you get to the cutout where it peels again. VPN. I haven't been contacted by anyone. I had, I've had a company reach out to me on behalf of Skillshare, but it's not Skillshare. So they like, it's kind of like a hiring agency where they are like, oh, hey, we'll pay you X amount to do the Skillshare ad. And then you actually like look into it and it's like, wait, that's actually less than Skillshare would pay me directly because you guys want a cut of it. So no. Hey, they sent me the right size plate guys. So, deck panel, so M5 nuts. Oh, I know it, LTT got, but here's the thing, like some people take the internet too seriously. Nobody ever calls in a TV show. You know, you're, you're, you're watching, you know, The Simpsons. I don't know, do people still watch The Simpsons? But you're watching The Simpsons and then an ad comes on TV for some random thing that you don't like. Nobody calls Fox and goes, I was watching The Simpsons and there was an ad for Raid Shadow Legends. Don't ever do that again. But if a YouTuber does an ad for something that people don't like, it's, you know, they, they've, you know, they've stolen their breakfast and their candy. 
like it's it's, it's an ad. It's, it's just an ad. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen it as a uh, a thing to make a huff about. But let's be honest. You can just skip it. Look at the timeline. Wait for the ad to stop and then just click. So. point to like I just delete stuff I have no problem deleting comments on my videos if it's a dumb comment I have no problem deleting it but you still read that comment so stuff does get to you sometimes okay B die what do you mean F I didn't drop any frames. That's all on you. I didn't drop any frames. Martin, you're banned. <laughs> Overhead cam. Zoom out. Zoom out. There we go. Wasn't me. Couldn't be. Have the DIN rails the wrong way? Nope. Uh, DIN rails are going the opposite way of your bed. And my DIN rails oops, overhead go this way. And my bed goes the opposite way. So we are good. Okay, orientation, back, we're good there, that's the front. What's the new trick from engagement? Same, rather short. Well, here's the thing. Um, you can get DIN rails that go as wide, but all the electronics and everything are designed to be mounted on a 250. So you technically need the same length DIN rail for all sizes. It Getting longer DIN rails for the bigger builds you don't get anything at well you have more room to move electronics around but you don't need it so to save you know items that you need to make for the machine this doesn't need to be a custom size you can ship the 250 size with all the machines because they all use the same electronics so it, it going with longer ones yeah it, it's nice to have more room but you don't need to so from a manufacturing standpoint, it makes sense to have one item for all SKUs. Oh, LDO docks. I see what you mean. 2.4 kit. Uh, wiring guide. Why is the LDO? Oh, they want them the other way. I see. The LDO guys want them differently. Okay, so let's flip them around. No biggie. I should have checked the LDO stuff. I did not. So yeah, so this is, I uh, I did it this way to show people that are building um, normal kits, non-LDO kits, how to do it according to the manual. Um, now for those building the LDO kits, I will now show you how to install them per the LDO kit manual. So uh, yeah. That was uh, totally the plan there. Totally the plan. Um,
And with the LDO, you kind of want to install everything how they want to, uh, simply for the fact that uh, where the wires line up and everything. So, oh, one more over. I guess it doesn't really matter. And it's closer to the front. One more to the front. Plastic end caps. Do I even have? Where are the plastic end caps? Are they in a different bag? Oh, they're probably in a different bag. Motion, belt chains, cables. Uh, the plastic end caps, because they weren't with the extrusions. So let's take a look here where they would be at. Plastic end caps. Yeah, they probably want those caps there for rattling. Problem is, I gotta find them. So which bag are they in? Nope. Not with the rails. The cable kit. Motion. Did I accidentally throw them out? Nope. I don't know where these uh, would be at. Yeah, I don't know where those caps would be at in what box. Uh, Michael, five dollars. Thank you, appreciate it. Oh, they're print. Are they printed? No, they're not printed. Those aren't printed. What shifted rail? Well, I haven't finished moving them yet. I get my stream music it is uh, uh, stream beats printed parts LED splitter LED clip handlebar spacer that stopper plug panel yeah I don't see so yeah I don't know where those uh hey Steve if you're here uh, you are here uh, apparently these ex these uh, guys right here are supposed to have uh, clips or packages on the end or something, and I can't find them. Do you happen to know what box they were in, or do you remember? Oh no, one of my bags opened. Crud. Belts, chains, and fans. On that one should be an electronics box. Okay. Um, yeah. Not an electronics box. One.
Oh, there they are. Okay, found them. Found them. So we've done that. So also with the motors, they got to face a certain way with the uh, the feet. I think that's all I got to worry about for now. Electronics, yeah, because they have their layout goes like that. So yeah, so all those go that way. Okay, so I think we're okay to continue on. Print orientation, front, back, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, heat set time. Any tip on lowering Z move resonating noise? Um, play around with speeds and feeds and accelerations. And then also um, make sure again, not stealth chop. now because we need all my Z parts. Now did I take the time to print out all my Z parts and or all my printer parts and organize them neatly? into separate bags and boxes. No, I threw them all in one box. Because YOLO. find that last piece, which I know I printed. You come out, you come out, you come out, you come out, you come out. I'm looking for one of these skinny ones, which I'm pretty sure I printed all of them. Hmm. Am I blind? Because I literally printed all four of them, took a picture, and then put it in my tool, or posted the picture online. So I have all four of these. Look for the red one. I am looking for the red one. Ta da! Found oh, my desk.
Yeah, because I printed all the parts. And then uh, I took a picture of it and posted it on Twitter. So I know I printed them all. Hmm. How could I lose one? That makes no sense. Top right. That's not it. Outside the box to the right. Uh, I got one, two, one, two, one, two, one. I mean, top right. I'm missing the one that goes with that. Where the heck did it go? Under the lid? No, not under the lid. This is really annoying because I printed it. I know I printed it. Ah, uh, shoot. How can I lose a printed part? Uh, bloody hell. And let, ah, uh, crud. I had all the printed parts in the other room. The other room where my son was in the other day and uh, he likes to take printed parts and hide them if he gets at them I might have to go look upstairs <laughs> he's done that before where he's grabbed a part and run off with it I'll uh I'll be back in a minute here. Let's see where the hell that part went. Yep, start another print. Now, nah, check under his pillow. I'm gonna be back in a minute. Um, let's see where he went. I don't know where he put it. Good job, Calvin. Good job. Thanks. Thank you, little man. Ah, uh, great. <laughs> okay. Um, which really sucks because I printed one and I knew I had a dud part, so I reprinted it. I gotta reprint it again. Crud. Okay, anyways. Heat sets. How did I can't believe I lost that. Because I reprinted it. I printed one one, I printed all of them. One warped. 
I printed that one again specifically, put it in the box, and now I don't know where it went. Unless in the box with the uh oh. nope. Nope. That sucks. No, it's not in these. These are the A B idlers. Ah, oh, jeez. I'll just print it. Again. Red things on top of the trident. Those are, um, printed test cubes. Why not use the V0? Because I already got the red loaded in V226. So, um, unfortunately, A. Raymond, can you grab that one piece? And, uh, cause I, I don't have the next cloud access on, uh, this computer. Didn't you bump that box with the frame? Yeah, I don't know where the parts would be though. They're not on the ground or anything. Okay, so heat sets in there. Heat sets in all these. Yeah, I don't know where the hell that part could be on. That really sucks. That is going to bug me. Because now I won't be able to... Like, honestly, this is as far as I wanted to get anyways, is just get the Z drives assembled. And then we we're gonna call it there for the stream, but uh, unfortunately, I found the Allen key, so it's it's not the Allen key. Oh, this sucks. Uh, it's whatever. It's this piece. I'm missing one of these for the Z drive. I'm missing this one. I have no idea where it went. Focus. Is it working good? I don't know. Um, well, as soon as you have three, use three different kits for building. Actually, no, I've only used two. Um, the first V0 I built was uh, self source. Okay, oh, there it is. Dunar. Oh, okay, one second. Download. 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 Thank you, Dunar. Okay, let's see here. So let's see, desktop. So I need one of these. Oh, hey, there's that Easter egg for you guys. So I need that one. Delete. And settings, speeds. Uh, 
thinking this is that one little slice hour dang it gonna run into auto speed issues 26 enough yeah we're gonna roll the dice okay so maybe we'll get to the point where uh, we can catch up but if not we'll see see how long it takes to put these together That sucks. Uh, what's with the 571 donation? It converts it to American, I think. So if you donate in not American, it converts it to American. That's something that Stream Elements does. I gotta figure out how to not do that because it's kind of actually annoying. They'll read off, oh, so-and-so donated, you know, this much money. And then it's like $3.47 Canadian. Just a little smushed. It's still good. It's still good. Goes from the other way, anyways. Uh, the conversion is kind of cool. Like it is nice. So you can see, like, if somebody donates, like, you know, some random currency you've never heard of. You know, kind of what it is. But it's it just kind of annoying when I read out, like, oh, so and so donated twenty-five Swedish kroner. It's like three fifteen American or whatever. At least I think it converts it to American. I, know, I just think it's cool when somebody from Japan donates because then I'm getting paid in Pokemon money. I gotta find out where he took it. Last time he took a part, it was, uh, I used to have a box that had an entire V2 or V2.4 part. Like I literally, so pro tip, um, if you only have one printer, the very first thing you should print after you get your printer tuned is all the parts for your printer. Okay. So if you just built a, a V2 and that's your only, you know, printer after you get it up and tuned, Go print all the parts for a V2, or at least all the mission critical parts. Put them in a box and forget about them until you need them. Because the last thing you want is your printer to break and you not have a backup part, right? Like something crack or whatever. So uh, I had a box with all the V2 parts. And then uh, I found them all under his bed one day. Because he was down here in the room. And I don't know what he was doing. And then I'm like, what are you doing? And he runs away and I see he's holding a part. And then I go up to his room and I look under his bed and there's like an entire Voron worth of printed parts under his bed. Are we good? Good enough. We'll live. So 
That's why I keep all my prints now up and out of the way, because he'll just take them. Which I don't mind, like, I've printed them like little trains and uh, planes and whatnot for him to play with. But, uh, I think because of that, he thinks all printed plastic things are toys, so. Uh, Murph, 10 Canadian, thank you, appreciate it, for the mini Nero protection fund. Way to discourage donations and views. For the longest time, I thought that the Japanese symbol for money was Pokemon money. Because when I played Pokemon as a kid, that's they used the yen symbol. So I didn't know that that meant yen for the longest time. Because I just assumed it was the Pokemon money symbol. And I didn't know what it legit meant. <laughs> so I didn't know they used yen in the game. Which also made sense why like a bottle of water was like $200. But then again, for the longest time, I thought we were, or we will rock you and we are the champions were two completely different songs. Because I never actually heard them both played, like the, the one song played outright. Until I was like, old enough to realize I was thinking wrong for the longest time. Because usually, you know, you hear it in a stadium or in a movie or whatever, and it's one part or the other. You never hear the whole song. So yes, I thought we will rock you and we are the champions were two completely different songs. Maybe he wants to build one. I'm waiting for the day that he's uh, he's still a little young. He's he'll, he's four in uh, next month, but I'm just waiting for the day that he is old enough that we can build a printer together. That'll be cool. That came out really good. David's here. Everyone say hi, David. They are too completely. Then what are the what's the Queen song that is too like? I don't know. Every time I hear it, it's like one song now. Unless I'm thinking of two different songs. See now I'm getting all the Queen guys angry. See engagement. I switch up the game. It's no longer going. Mute all the time. Okay, where are we at? Uh, manual. There is at least double side A back. Okay, that makes sense. What does the R2? Uh, revision 2. Well, I know Bohemian Rhapsody's one song. Oop, I forgot something. Makes sense. And that's another thing I did. I have a, an actual plug bar under my desk here for plugging stuff in. So I no longer need to run an extension cord. And all these parts, um, all the red parts were printed on uh, V226. And again, I'm pretty sure it is cherry red, Sparta 3D. Although the, the spool says sparkle or fluorescent red. I can't remember which I ordered. I'm pretty sure it was cherry red. And then gray's cloud gray, and that was all printed on uh, Toasty Boy. You will still forget to plug in things, I know. And I'll still lose Allen keys. Hey, okay, so if you've never done heat sets before, here's a video on how to do it. That won't load. There you go, heat sets. It's a ticky talk or whatever the YouTube equivalent is. So, how are we doing? How are we doing? 5%. Let's go faster. Okay. So now I need my rods. Our motion. Precise printer parts. Upgraded membership. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so there's those pins. Okay, we need 
need a nine millimeter GT2. Get those. Get my uh, super duper uh, thread locker compound. And by super duper thread locker compound, um, extreme nails. Because it works and it's cheap. Okay, so position it, show uh, set of screws, insert the thing, so there, blah, 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 33 millimeters. Zip in. Ooh, these, these are some nice 22 gears. Uh, set screws, where are the set screws for these gears? Set screws, are they in a different bag? Oh, no, they're there. What's the point of two set screws and pulleys? Uh, just security. So these actually have a little bit of thread locker on them already, it looks like, so good there. If, if you're looking at like any screw and you see okay you see the little bit of blue on it that's thread locker so you already have thread locker on them any reason not to mix abs and asa parts no it won't hurt ASA, for the most part, is basically just ABS formulated for UV resistance. Functionally, in our use case, you're not going to notice any difference, really. Um, it is slightly more stiffer than ABS, but that also, on the opposite side of that, means it's also more brittle. So just be careful with it. Um, yeah. Pro tip. Uh, Murph, $20. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for respect to show us all, even with the dumb comments and questions, lame jokes we tell you and at Steve Builds Rocks. Thank you. Uh, Steve's a good dude. Oop. Special weather statement. Complex storm setup threatens travel. Good thing I'm not going anywhere. Uh, thoughts on temp color changing ABS? As long as it doesn't affect the structural rigidity of the ABS, go for it. Probably be cool. Okay, so let me zoom out just a bit here. Okay, so tip. Um, for these, we need to make them all uh, 33 millimeters from the one side. So, take your uh, calipers, your vernier calipers. Everyone's like, why do you call them vernier calipers? I don't know. I work in a tool shop. Well, I did. And everyone just calls them verniers there. So it's a regional dialect. So set it to like 33. Lock it down. And then this right here is your depth mic. So now when you put them together. Do that. Tighten your set screw. Get it pretty close. Let me snug it down first. Now, that. And that's thirty three. Or 
vernier caliper is the proper. Yeah, I just normally just call it a vernier. So if you're curious, you can double check. 33. Ooh, yeah. One done. Well, use the other end. Well, here's the thing, like that, they're both, this is 33. So since I'm measuring off a flat point, I find it easier to measure the 33 millimeters like that versus using the inside jaw or the outside jaw. Cause you could also measure it like that, but measuring like that and measuring it like that is the same dimension. And I, I like using that for offsets. Everyone does some, like if, if you're used to doing it one way, it's it's just, that's just how you work usually. It's hard to switch, flip flop. Is it possible to build say a 2.4 R2 from an LDO kit, use it to print parts for the PIP program and end up in net profit? Okay, here's the thing um, with PIF, because this comes up every now and then. PIF, technically you make money, okay? The thing is, you will make more money working at McDonald's for minimum wage if you do it like for two hour, an hour a day than you would off a machine, okay? Because it takes how long to print a full set of Voron parts, okay? So, yes, when you, you, you are technically selling up a set of PIF parts for a profit. Now it's not a lot of profit. Um, I did PIF for 2.1 um, back in the day. I don't know what the numbers are now. And I sold at cheaper than most. And I think I made 15, $20 a set, if that. But one machine that's 15 or $20 profit every three days. Plus you have to factor in the man hours of swapping the parts out, uh, driving to the post office, like, the hourly wage for PIF is well below minimum. You need multiple machines to see any form of return. And then you're investing several thousand dollars in machines that you have to make several thousand on to break even. You pretty much make enough to cover the cost of the machine. And if something breaks on the machine to replace that, um, and then beer money, it, it's, it's not, it's not, you would need a lot of machines for it to be worth it. And then you have a lot of initial investment. So it, it's basically, if you like hobby, like you'll, you'll make more selling, you know, printing and selling these dragons on Etsy than you will off of focus on the dragon. You'll make more printing and selling these on Etsy than you will from PIF. Okay, so we have those assembled. Now we need to make uh, the belt drive assembly. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay, so apply thread locker on the big guys. Which I don't know if these use the same. Yeah, they do, okay. Sweet. But I work from home, I like printing sales, make a decent amount of money, salary. So here's the thing, like, the most you'll make, so say say on paper, I don't know what the number is now because the prices are different and I haven't looked into it for a while, but say you made $20 per PIF set, okay? It takes two to three days per machine to make a sell, to make a set, okay? So you're working for $20, so however many, however long you're, it takes you to swap the parts out of the machine, put new, like get a new bed plate going, uh, hey, a part warped, you have to reprint a part now, get everything, check all the parts, bag all the parts, box all the parts, 
bring them to the post office to ship them. So you factor all that and you're making $20 per set. And you can only do that once every two to three days. Is that worth your time? Uh, check Discord for That's another way of doing it. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I'm used to that method that I, was, I showed you there. So, yeah. That's the problem. It, it's not if you don't run into issues. Exactly. So, yes, you make money. The problem is the, the time is what gets you. That's why I say you could sell these, you know, uh, Joel is running an Etsy store. He's selling these for like 40 to 50 bucks a pop, I think. And these take less than a day to print. You're going to get a much better ROI on these kind of things or whatever the flavor of the month print is on Reddit than, uh, than Voron parts. So. Okay, so we got to make our shafts now. So we need some 625 bearings. And what are those? M5 shims. So let me find my M5 Look at those precision spacers. Ho 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 ho. Fancy. Oh, not mobile camera. Overhead. Nope. Overhead. Still getting used to uh is Clicky Probe. Um, it's not officially part, but this kit does come with Clicky Probe. So, it's not official, but it's part of this kit. So I will be building it with this kit. So, we've got, put this guy in. So we got, oh okay. God. Don't rip the bag open. So it's three of these per one. So that goes on there. Okay, and it goes right on the end. Then we got two shims. And if you're wondering, uh, the stack, so it's bearing, uh, 20 tooth, nine mil gear, shim shim, bearing, shim shim, 20 tooth pulley or 80 tooth pulley, then bearing. These are Gucci shims. And where did I put all those? Um, put them back in the bag. In the box. Where did I put the set screws? Oh, here they are. Uh, all LDO kits come with Clicky Probe, I'm pretty sure. It's a selling point of the kit. So if you're curious, um, let's see here. So here is, I'm linking it in the description right now. This is what all the, uh, are in. So if you're curious about the LDO kit, that's what's in it. And I'm not putting any Loctite on these threads because these come with a uh, thread locker pre-applied. And when you tighten these up, you want everything like squished together. Oh, 
would help if I put it in the right hole. Ah! That's what she said. There we Do I recommend using Revo Hamera for the V2? Uh, the, the Hamera is completely unsupported by the Voron uh, ecosystem. So uh, the Hamera won't strap to a Voron. It, it, I think there's a mod. Somebody made a mod for it, but it's not an official thing. Now, a Revo is mountable. Um, I'm running, um, that's got a Revo, si a Revo Micro. Um, my switch wire's got a Revo 6, and this is getting a Revo Voron. I'm loving the 60 FPS out of this overhead cam, I will say. Although, I don't know, does it look a little dark? Is the screen, is this camera dark for some reason? Or is that just me? Uh, what dinner gonna be? I don't know, it depends. My wife might get out of work early tonight. If she does, I'll make something. If not, probably chicken and rice. Something quick and easy. Overhead is a touch dark. Okay, one second here. I can't play with it right now. I gotta cl climb up there to do it. It's all default settings. I, I'm not a camera guy. I think it's because it's 60 FPS and I have it set to 160 for the uh, how much light's getting in. Plus it's zoomed in. Okay, there's two built. in time. Any tools I recommend buying with the LDO kit? Um, the kit pretty much comes with everything. So like um, crimping tool, stripping tool, um, soldering iron. Gonna need a soldering iron. Diego, 1327. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, hey, boss man. Hello there. Yeah, PIF is a specific program. It's not, some people, like I've, I've seen it where people try to sell like, oh, selling PIF parts, not part of PIF. It's like, no, PIF is the program. Just say you're selling Voron parts. And don't say PIF quality. 
like Voron standards is just Voron standards. It's just how the parts are. They're not um, like printing parts to what the spec says for how we recommend you like for the settings for infill and whatnot isn't printing them to PIF quality or PIF standards. You're just printing them to uh, what we recommend you print them to. I've seen that on a few Etsy shops or in the uh, the flea market. Chiago. Chiago? Chiago. Is that right? Chiago? Is the T silent? Any of it going with Duet over at one of the BTT Octoboards? Um, the boards, the, the Big Tree Tech boards are good quality. I will never poo-poo on the quality of the Duet boards, okay? Um, are you going to be running Clipper or are you going to be running RepRap firmware? Um, there are people that run RepRap without issue on Vorons. It's, we don't really, the, you're going to have to be a little bit on your own. There's not as much support, but it is possible. Um, if you're running Clipper, you won't see any performance differences between them. Um, you're, you're not getting any performance. So you're pretty much paying just to have the Duet quality board if you're worried about quality with the uh, Big Tree Tech boards. Coda. You want to say hello? Heard him whining. I thought I heard him whining. Uh, mobile cam. What? What do you want? What? Aw. You tired? I know. Mama will be home soon. You say hello? Hey, look at that. You say hello? I know, Mom will be home soon. Okay. Mopey guy. Like, I'm the, I'm, nobody's paying attention to me. Uh, Philip, uh, 1,000 yen. Yen? I think that's yen. Uh, I can only save for a short time before work, but here's some more Pokemon coins. Awesome! I can buy all the... I can buy some great balls now. And an escape rope, which is awesome. How old is Doggo? He is... I want to say 9 or 10. He is wife's Doggo. He was here before me. Uh, what parts do you use on your electric screwdriver? Because I have the same one as you and I need to buy the same. Um, so I have an ES-126 and a WoW stick. And they both come with like bits. And I use the bits that came with both of them. Because that's what I got. Um, I got them both for review. Um, I've used the WoW stick for smaller stuff. Like M2s and whatnot. The WoW stick does not have the balls for like M3 and up. Uh, Leo the Human. $5. Doggo Treat Fund. He's on a diet. But there are diet doggo treats, so I'll make sure he gets them. Yeah, he's getting there. He's uh, Shepherd Husky, actually. That's why. Uh, that's why we have a Dyson. He sheds like crazy. I fix it bits. Yep, I fix it bits fit. Um, I just use the cheapy ones that came with the kits, and they're good enough for what I use. Like, really, I don't use a lot of expensive tools. I think, like, the most expensive tool I regularly use is uh, my PA-09, my Engineer PA-09. Like, in terms of my most expensive single-use tool that I, or single tool that I use here. Other than, like, a Milwaukee drill or whatever, but that's something you don't need just for 3D printing. It struggles with long M3s, but it works fine otherwise. Yeah, you're not gonna get something in that handheld little package that's going to be a torque monster. You're, you're just not. But for, you know, most of the stuff, it's good enough to get them down and save you the uh, the monotonous part of screwing stuff together. Okay. So we've got four of those.
check your work. They should look like that. Put the belts on. Uh, belts, 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 belts. Yes, 126 died motor stuff. That sucks. Mine's been, I got mine uh, just before we did the, uh, the, the V0 build and it's been chooching along. No issues. The original one they sent me didn't have a magnet in it though. And so they sent me another one. It's been fine since then. Uh, Vernier's a scale system with lines. Oh, I, I know. They're electronic. So it's not, so it's electronic calipers. I'm just so used to calling them Verniers that I call them Verniers. And then it drives engagement when people go, they're not Verniers. And I'm like, I know. I still call them that. Uh, gotta get some Minotoyo. I have Minotoyos. I've got an eight inch uh, digital Minotoyo in my toolbox at work along with uh, uh, zero to one digital Minotoyo. Um, stare at depth mic set. I I've got a bunch of good quality measuring stuff but it's at my toolbox at work, which will soon be my toolbox at home probably. So at that point I'll start using the Minotoyo at home because why not? Okay, put the belt loop on and then put it in. So obviously we're not gonna be able to do all of these uh, because one's still printing. Speed 150, go. So put the belt loop on, put that in there, check shaft position. So for those that don't know, um, your bearings on this end and this end float so when you go to put this together you put your belt on Oop, uh mike uh ten dollars thank you appreciate it thanks for the great streams have some tolberone coins there we go so the only bearing that is critical is the one in the middle so that's why the one in the middle has shims on each side and then the gears are pushed against it so that's like your your bible for the locating and then you just float the other bearings till they pop into the uh the appropriate holes that is that. And then you put the other, you put the top on and then M340s hold it all together. So it's a sandwich. A lot of M340s. Roby 4V Tech 4 screwdriver probably works well, relatively cheap. Traceable bat and back. Eh, that's an option. The thing is, I don't. We use a lot of plastic parts, and I'm always paranoid of cracking because I've cracked parts, you know, screw them together by hand. So go watch Tom's stream when he built his Voron using an electric screwdriver, the first one. He, he ended up using a proper one later on, but he used like a. A little bit of a beefier one the first few and it uh it it, it wasn't the greatest <laughs> uh kenny dog 44 five dollars appreciate it have you looking for a wall mount irk for buffer i shot you some files in the discord dm that should work well with the rep box awesome yeah th there are files that for putting that go into the rep box to make it a buffer the problem is um the ones that i saw you lose um capacity and i don't want to lose capacity I love 4K because I can crop in like this and not lose quality. Any thoughts on the second uh, tank and count pairs? I haven't even looked at the second. I, I know more is about the rat rigs and I don't have a rat rig. Um, I, I, the second's been around for a bit, hasn't it? Uh, more print, less printed parts. Well, what is durable? Um, this guy is a Voron with all the Voron printed parts and that printer is over two years old and it's running beta 2.4 parts so it's like even old revisions and I haven't replaced a single part on there other than swapping to the stealth burner um, and it's printed thousands of hours it's printed everything for that printer, that printer, that printer, that printer, that printer this printer, the Micron, the Rat Rig it's printed all of that 
And, uh, yeah. Like, I don't know about you, I'm not taking hammers to my printers. They only have to be strong enough to handle the forces that they operate with. Okay, so we got that. Adjustable torque. Ooh. Alex, thank you for becoming a member. Don't forget, uh, probably next... Yeah, yeah, today's the 15th or 16th. Either way. Uh, next week will be the... Uh, the monthly members stream probably on Friday so we'll do a little members only stream where we'll hang out I'll do something not completely uh, we'll do something but not something that I would consider content normal content I just placed an order for a Revo micro and viewers from spool 3d can save $20 custom charge and getting it directly there you go if any, don't forget, if anyone wants to order a Revo from E3D um, and you want to help the channel out, I do have an affiliate link in the description for E3D. Um, so I know it, it's not practical, depending on where you live in the world, for, to order from E3D directly. Um, but if you want to, you know, support the channel by buying something that you planned on buying and not costing you anything extra and me getting a little bit of change, uh, there is an affiliate link for E3D in the description. Uh, where can I find the wiring uh, scheme for the thermal fuse? Uh, it would be in the manual. I'm really loving this red. So I did play around with the colors. Uh, most of them are printed like the normal, what is the accent color and which one is the uh, primary color. But some of them are printed, um, I printed stuff the other way around just cause, so. Trident manual because I, I think the older v2 manual might not have it but check the Trident manual but basically all you're doing for uh, what is it the thermal fuse you just cut the uh, whatever the main wire going the the you get the positive and negative going to the heater bed right they're unlabeled but when you plug them into whatever one of them's positive one negative the positive one you cut you splice in the uh, the thermal fuse and then you attach the thermal fuse to the bed um, together give me a second because the uh this one already has it in the bed and i've got to kill where are we at oh oh that's why it's we're hit by the layer time issue now what's the difference with r2 uh tweaks to the stls um, just for assembly, like, uh, uh, bug fixes, if you would call it that. Um, the gantry is now, uh, MGN 12 and a few other changes. Basically, if you have no issues with your current V2.4, upgrading, you probably won't see much. But if you plan on building fresh, build, uh, build fresh. Uh, Dean, CC, five pounds. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, keep going, natural public speaker. Thank you. Um, my first four on build, 2.4 R1 in the works, but holding on fully SB is released. Crappy weather in the UK. It's the UK. Is the weather ever not crappy? Okay, so since we got to wait for that printed part to finish, if you are curious on how the bed wiring is. So, see the thermal fuse here? Okay, so the thermal fuse, this one wire right here is the live wire. So they've cut it and they've spliced it in. 
Um, looks like they probably soldered it and then heat shrunk it, which you can solder mains, but we recommend don't do it because you need to do it properly. Um, and then the thermal fuse is attached to the bed. So that way if the bed hits 125 Celsius, it pops and kills power going to the bed. Uh, and the plate is Blanche ground for whoever it was that is asking. By the way, that's how good the magnet is on this. I can lift the whole bed up from with the flex plate. Magnet strong. This is going to get really annoying because having two builds going at the same time, I'm going to have to like have two different piles of parts and half finished printers everywhere. They get those Warren labeled directly from. Um, you have to check whoever sells LDO. I know Sparta 3D in Canada carries them, but usually you got to check the uh, whoever's a reseller for LDO. Okay, so we have that. Okay, now I got to put my lids on. Hopefully I have all of these ones. I do. So let me. One, two, three, four, five. that printed part look for the boron heart next to the part that indicates that it is an accent part okay yeah so we did this in the manual just to make it a little bit easier but accent parts are usually denoted so that it makes finding them easier and there's an m5 nut in it which my bag of m5 roll-ins broke open so now they're everywhere Have I tried any of the printed? I have not yet. I'm tempted to, I just haven't gone around to it. So before, like this is one of the things that is new with uh, overhead, with 2.4 R2. So before where like these little uh, M5s would fall out, uh, they can't anymore because they, they sit in a different spot. So before where you had to worry about these, um, they kind of still can, but not as easily because there's um, something preventing it, I'm pretty sure. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, or can they still fall out? I don't know. I could have sworn that was something we tried to fix. Yeah, so now it won't fall out anymore. Are they captured once they are installed? Yeah, so they are captured. So before with like 2.4 or like the previous revision, you had the risk of those nuts falling out. So most of us just ended up gluing them in place. Now there is actually like plastic preventing that from falling out. Uh, Dwarf, five, five pounds, five pounds, five pounds, or no, five euro. I always get it mixed up. Why do I always get it mixed up? Uh, thanks. And thank you. They printed part strength. That is, um, I like, you know, not to knock LDO, uh, but that was one thing that I really liked about the Fizek kit is all the, all the screws came in a little like Plano case, like all their screws came in one of these guys with all the screws and everything in one kit and it was openable and labeled and whatnot. I will give them credit for that. And that's one of, one of the good things I'm gonna say about their kit in the uh, thing. There is uh, a lot of ways though the LDO kit is better. Let's, let's just put it that way though. So.
Uh, the shaft's round with... Yeah, they have a flat along one of the sides. Like, uh, down the whole side. Which, that's, uh, if you have the ability to do it, that's the easiest way to do it. Did I find the missing part? Um, yeah, it is, uh, should be done in about 20 minutes. Gotta go. Take care, Chris. No, we, I, I looked. I don't know where it went. I'm gonna find it like literally two minutes after stream ends. I guarantee it. But I don't know where it went. I'm thinking my kid grabbed it and it's, uh, it's gone. He has a, a tendency to grab it. Cause I had, I had all these parts sitting on a shelf in the other room. Oop, no, it did not. And, uh, I think he, uh, got in there and, uh, did what? Little kid's doing. Got his hands on him. So that would be a no. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. So I need three M3s to go with this. I'm basically just putting all like the uh, screws that I would need so that when that comes out, we can just kind of rip it together. So how many do I need? I need a bunch of those. Okay. Oh, uh, somebody become a member? EJ, thank you for coming a member. Oh, uh, it's refreshing all that. One second. Main overlay. Refresh from cash. There we go. There we go. Ender thick sauce. I don't have an Ender six, so I can't really comment on it. Okay, are we are we doing motors? We're doing motors. Cool. Sixteen tooth pulleys. Sixteen tooth. And we need some motors. Hey, Maker Viking. Where are my motors? So, there are motors. Are we on overhead? No, we're not. There are motors that have plugs and there's motors that have wires coming out of them. The ones that have wires coming out of them are for your AB. So, the ones with the plugs are for your Z. And then obviously the, uh, the pancake is your other one, your extruder. Look at these chonky boys. So if you are curious what model of motor we have, that is the model of motor for Zet. Typo, typo and manual by check belts. Where's check belts? Check for belt. Make sure the closed belt loop is in the part. I mean typo. Type already fixed. Oh, okay. So two GT pulley, and uh, we have this fancy dancy little printed spacer now to make these even easier. So we got that. Where are my set screws? And then let me get the printed spacer jig. Overhead. 
I'm getting hungry already. Should be is in. Oh. Well, it, it, it fixed apparently. Did I put an Allen key? I put it away. the Revo live on my site. How many are they like flying off the shelves or because you didn't do pre-orders right you just did email notifications if I'm not mistaken right you know what I'm gonna move myself up top because I'm gonna go up top oh grab me there we go I'm going up here Yeah, R2 just has a bunch of like bug fixes and tweaks and adjustments to make things a little bit easier to assemble. And then uh, the biggest change is the gantry moving to a system that uses the uh, MGN12 instead of MGN9, dual MGN9. So if you're curious, uh, we have this little printed jig and this puts all your uh, motors in the right spots. Although that doesn't fit across. recommendations for a 350 USC. So I'm not American, so I'm not sure what the market is in the US. And I don't, most of my printers are self-built. I, I don't have any experience with commercial Core XY printers, like any of them. So I really can't give you a good recommendation because I don't know enough to be, uh, I, I just can't, I can't give you on my heater bed yeah the heat bed it, okay so for heaters and 3d printers they're just giant resistors there is really no so for your hot end and your bed there is no positive and negative because the heating element is just a resistor power can go in either way but when you actually are wiring it up one would be a positive one is a negative so just be aware of that but it's whatever you decide to wire it up
Yeah, there, there is a few changes to the Z drives. Like, th this is, you know, there are changes to this compared to if you've built a, a 2.4. This will look a little bit different because this is, you know, the R2 revision. So there, there, there's been some updates to things. Yeah, so a lot of the tweaks are just to make it easier to assembly. It's not like you're going to see any real major performance differences between them. Okay, so we have that pulley position, printed guide to make it easy. Okay, motor orientation. So now we got to put these on. If I am not mistaken, these are... Got them all this time. Okay, motor orientation, pay attention. So they come out this side. M38s because we use a million M38s in this printer. Let's go put them all back in the bag so I don't lose them. Usually what I recommend is uh, get when you're putting two pieces together, get all your screws started and then tighten them. That way you're not accidentally misaligning them. Oh yeah, flip them. That's right. It's flipped on this one. Steve! Thank you. That's right. I'm following the manual and the LDO one is different. So that would mean it's the opposite. So because on the LDO ones, which I read that. I just completely forgot that I read that. Uh, 2.4 kit. Yeah, it's right here. So the parts are different. So they go on the opposite side versus the manual, which has them there. So on the manual, it, uh, let's see. So like that for the LDO. So there we go. So again, um, like I did with the uh, the electronics, I showed you how to do it according to the manual. Now I'm going to show you how to do it uh, according to the LDO kit. See, I, I didn't do it wrong. I'm just showing you both options. Right? You got to cover all your bases. You got to cover all your bases.
smooth. <laughs> I have it sped out. The problem is I still have the minimum layer time to deal with. Oh, David's here? Or LDO David's here. Hello. It's a 12 hour difference, I believe, over there. Yeah, this is so for those that don't know, this is I'm using the release candidate manual for 2.4 R2. Um, soon, those asking. Say hi, David. Again. Other David. Okay, where are we at? So we got those on. And now we need to attach it to our bed frame. So, ah, five minutes. Dang it. Very soon. Orientation. The Z0 drive is first drive that must be added to the printer. The fully assembled Z drive is highlighted in blue. So we got to flip it over and put some nuts in it. Five minutes so by the time I get a couple of these on I should be able to uh, should be able to uh, do the rest actually move this camera so it's uh yeah whatever we'll just do these ones front and then whatever so it's actually up higher than it used to be but it's also further down more Two there. Why upside down assembly? Which corner is this? It is that corner. So, quick way to double check is when you're looking at the printer from the front and the back, you should see the, the, uh, the whatchamacallit, the bearing. And you're looking at the printer from the side, you'll see the, uh, 
the side. <laughs> Super good terminology. So, that goes like that. And then what are we gonna use? M540s. Wait, up oh, button head, socket head. Uh, I should make a jig. It's actually on my plans list now. On my plans of projects I want to do in the next little while is uh, put the overhead cam at least on a movable jig so I can move it around. So it's not on my today list, but it's on my near future list, which I might, I was going to be very, like at first I was like, oh, I'll put a motor up there and hook it up to an Arduino so I can remotely control it. And then part of me is like, dude, I can, I can just reach up and grab it. I'm going to be lazy and just put it on a slider of some sort. So I need to buy... Probably some V-wheels or something. Buy high wind rails. <laughs> well, I could just get two long pieces of like 2040 extrusion run, run against there and run against there because I got like a little cutout up here and then uh, just build a carriage to go across and just plop it on top and move it around. Heck, honestly, just using tubing would probably be good because uh, I don't want it just, you know, floating around. Like, it doesn't need to float around. Like, it could be just, you know, a tube on a tube. I don't know if I'm supposed to put all these on right now. Yeah, it says do them like one at a time, but I'm gonna put all four of these on and then I'm gonna go on and put on all four of these after. So. Make it easy. That one's almost done. that just doesn't want to slide too well. There we go. Hey, print's done. Okay. Fan 100%.
we go. Put rails on your E3 V2 and use it as V rollers. Um, I, I think I have an Ender 3 um, S1 coming, so... The Ender, the Ender 3 V2 mods have been kind of sidelined because I don't use that printer and I've been kind of working on other stuff. An Ender 2 switch wire. The thing is, I've already built a switch wire on stream and converting an Ender to a switch wire isn't actually a crazy amount. It, it's pretty much, there's a few things that are different but like 90% of the build is just building a switch wire. So it, it's just a switch wire with some changes to the frame. So it would be, I'd be losing an Ender 3 V2, which I, I kind of wanted to keep as an Ender 3 V2 so I could do Ender 3 V2 things with it. And uh, I'd be getting a printer that I already have one of. So it just kind of felt redundant to do, I guess. I don't know. Uh, what is the red filament? It is Sparta 3D. I'm pretty sure it's cherry red. Because I ordered cherry red, and I'm pretty sure it's cherry red. But they also have fluorescent red, and I think fluorescent's brighter. So, so let me get this off so I can throw this plate on my uh, granite here so it'll cool off quicker. Cool. Hi. And then we'll get that put together so we can put that last edge drive on. JMA, member for five months. Uh, cool. I didn't know members can do this. Well, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Hot. Cool down. This is the proper technical way to uh, cool your prints down, by the way, if you didn't know. I spy a hacko. I don't have a hacko. good. Whatever, I'll get that all off later. There we go. Okay, so now we can put this together. Yay. Put all the heat sets in. Yay. Honestly, I just wanted to get the feet on here before calling it an end of the stream. So that way, uh, it has feet. <laughs> so I'm not sitting the, uh, extrusions on the ground anymore and scuffing them. printed the right one. I'm just realizing I, I didn't really, really check if I printed the right one. Because there's a, an A and a B one, a variant of these. Are you sure I printed the right one? I hope I printed the right one. Um, if I didn't print the right one, um, make sure you wash your hands and uh, be safe out there because I'm just going to end stream.
headsets. Okay, so hopefully I printed the right one. Because again, I'm just going to end stream if I did not. So that's that. Now, yay! We're good. Uh, are those build surfaces your flight? Yeah, they're just uh, PEI flex plates. Uh, these ones are all for Brico that I'm running right now on my machines because he sent me a bunch of awesome ones that have my logo in it. Um, yeah. What's Mr. Clown doing? That and I can end stream on a good footing. Wow, David. Thank you. Thanks, Dad. Blade Scraper, $5. Love the LDO kit. If I had room for another printer, I wouldn't hesitate to grab the 2.4 kit. Great stream, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, the, the LDO really knocked it out of the park. Like, they are really the only kit that I have no problem recommending for Vorons. Just because they everything that we'd be worried about with kits, because a lot of the problems with kits come down to electrical stuff, and we don't want to endorse anything that, you know, little Timmy building his 3D printer for the first time burns his house down. Nobody's burnt their house down with a Voron and we don't want anyone to be the first. So the fact that the LDO kit comes with all the wiring pre-done um, kind of makes it pretty easy to recommend them. Because that's usually the, uh, the part that we worry about the most when it comes to these kits. Can you remind me a more powerful? ES-126 is the one I like. The WoW stick is okay if you like, you only use it for like really small things. But like, if you're using it for bigger than M3, the WoW stick has no balls. Wow stick is for like laptop. Yeah, I've seen people use it for like drones and quads and like little stuff. Okay. Yeah, quadcopters. There we go. This one that we rushed off is probably the best looking one so far. Yep. Okay. So back to the manual. Now we got to pivot the motor in, and then it's two M510s. So, and these are socket heads. 
Suck it to me. Okay, so don't tighten it. So slide into place, insert at an angle, slide into place, leave the bolt loose for the next step. Okie dokie. So for these, uh, overhead, oh, overhead, they just kind of pivot in, and you just kind of, oh shoot. Well, that, uh, I'm not taking that off. That one's gonna live under there forever. So you're just sliding this insert and angle, slide into place. Uh, don't tighten, leave the bolt loose for the next step. So we're, oh. oh, we're coming up on four hours. My headphones are dying. Use a magnet, you goober. Too late. I'm probably scuffing the heck out of this frame doing this, but whatever. We're good. It's the top. You don't see the top of your printer ever anyways. Tilted. Nah, it's spring loaded. They don't move that easily. At least these ones don't. And it was pretty well under there, so. It wasn't gonna move. I'll just say I'll do it off stream, and then uh, we'll just leave it at that. Right? in a certain orientation so make sure you put them in in the right way just kind of slide in there uh, resettable fuses are we don't recommend using resettable fuses you want your fuse to pop if it pops and die okay the problem with the resettable fuse is they reset when the pe temperature drops back down to normal. So what happens when you're not home and it pops, it's just gonna keep going again and again and again and again and again. So you want it to, when it pops, to stay dead. So these are, you're just tightening them, you're not going crazy snug. 
Don't tighten, leave the bolt loose for the next step. And what is the next step? You tighten the tensioner and that tightens the belts properly. And then you tighten them. And then you put the foot off. So, so now you move that latch down. That tightens it up. Try spinning it to make sure it stays centered. We're good. And do the same thing here. So that way you don't have to play with tension on your belts. They're pretty much always going to be tensioned correctly. There we go. And then we put our feetsies on with uh, M516. So let me find our feet, which are in, which kit, which kit has the feet? feet. Go. 516 socket heads. Yes, this is the R2 manual. When do we expect it to go live? It has been asked a million times and the answer remains the same. Soon. Sooner than you think, but not as soon as you'd like. Or maybe, I actually, to be honest, I don't even know. I'm not the guy who's in charge of the manual or the releases or all that. I don't even know how to use GitHub, so, I just know soon. Uh, do you think Wobbly's edge drive pulleys could cause an inconsistent probe reading? Um, they would wobble consistently, shouldn't they? But yes, it, it could be... Uh, uh, it could cause inconsistent probe reading. Well, if you clip probe, click probe, and it itself will have a pretty high standard deviation. Um... You could see, yeah, it, it is a possibility. A lot of stuff can play into having you you having funky Z movement. Every time I grab the printer, I'm getting grease all over me. Blech. Okay. Got it. A new sign every time someone complains about the shoulder strap. No, because it's all about engagement, right? YouTube loves when people keep, why do I keep dropping that screw? Uh, when people keep asking, or as long as it's engagement, YouTube doesn't care what you guys are talking about, right? So every time, you know, I mute the mic or I leave a shoulder strap twisted or somebody asks when 2.4 R2 is coming out, it's all engagement, baby. It's all engagement. It's making the algorithm happy. So make sure you, uh, you guys are, I haven't even said it tonight. That's how much I love metrics. Make sure you guys are liking that smash button. Cause what do we got? We got 376. Oh, it's gone down. But I know at one point we had near 500 people and we don't have 500 likes. That uh, that smash button is feel awfully lonely, guys. Okay. Good there. Good there. Put the feetsies on. Go, go. And we are good. I need to get a better desk. I'm 
tempted. I'm keeping an eye out. I'm waiting on those like uh, bamboo countertops to go on sale. I'm just going to buy one and stick it on top of this desk because this desk is like literally linoleum tile stuck to uh, it, it's like plywood with linoleum, 12, like 24 inch linoleum tiles stuck to it. So it's uneven as all heck and it like I've got holes in it. So I need to get a better surface to work on. But hey, look, it's a thing. It looks like a printer. I'm gonna have to move that camera out and over. So yeah, I think we're gonna call it there because after the feet, uh, check position, ensure that the belt tensioning did not cause this edge to motor and shift. Okay, we're good there. Yeah, we're good. Yep, we're good. So we've got those on, boom, boom, boom. Repeat instruction from your side. And now we're on to idlers. So yeah, so I think we're gonna call the stream there, guys. I need a lockable turntable. The problem with the turntable, mm, I could, I could do a turntable, I could. I've got a little one, but it's too little. So yeah, so I'm gonna end the stream there. Um, what do we got? We got 15 minutes till eight o'clock. So we'll, we'll leave it for a fat four hour stream. So uh, for the rest of it, uh, we'll do what we normally do. Open floor if anyone's got any questions or anything they want me to go over. Um, I will leave an open floor. Ooh, that first layer was, you know, my headphones just died, which means your music died. So we might end it a little bit sooner. Ooh, that's stuck down. I'll fix that later. Uh, okay. Stream still going. Yeah, my streams are usually, um, yeah, I usually run streams three to four hours. But actually, I'm starving right now. I'm going to end it here. So, okay. Yeah, we're going to call it. So, for those that, uh, that joined in on the stream, you guys are awesome. For anyone who donated or became a channel member, I would not be able to do the things I do uh, without your guys' support. So, you're all awesome. Even if you just tuned in to watch, you're awesome. Everyone's awesome. Um, again, huge shout out to LDO Motors for supplying the kit. If you wish to build uh, one of these, uh, I'll have links in the description once a few people send me their sites for where to buy it. But basically you gotta buy it through one of your local LDO resellers. Uh, LDO does not ship directly. Um, yeah, I will see you guys. I might do a stream, we might do a stream Friday. I doubt it though, we'll probably do Saturday night. Um, so I'll see you Saturday night. We're continuing the V Minion. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at 3P Nero in case things change. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go make some food. I'm starving. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Cheers. <laughs>